loud. You hear that noise? Woo, is that thing loud. Can't turn the radio up because you can't ignore it. That's a really important symptom that happens quite often nowadays in anything from SUVs to cars, passenger cars, to one-ton trucks. Uh, yeah, I'm talking about wheel bearing hubs. And you can't ignore them because it could be a bad end result if you do. Hey everyone, Sue from One Auto. So now that we've road tested this and heard the noise, which you heard, I wanna show you how you can diagnose it without any tools. You just need a jack or a lift. But if you jack up the wheel that you feel you're getting the noise from, if not, check both. I already checked the other side, the other side's fine. So you also wanna check your front end out because even though I'm 90% sure it's a wheel bearing, you need to be sure it's a wheel bearing. Plus you wanna, you don't wanna order parts and put all the stuff in and then find out you have another front end issue. So check your front end out. That way you can order everything at once. And we have great parts at oneauto.com to do all of this. Wheel bearings are like one of our biggest sellers because they're amazing and they're not expensive. Now, there are two symptoms for a wheel bearing, pretty much. You're gonna have howl and then you're gonna have wobble. So the howl always starts way before the wobble. The howling is when the bearings are starting to separate because that hub is coming out of that bearing shank in the center. And the, the wheel bearings are like, sometimes it runs out of grease because of the age of it. The grease just dispersed away from the heat of years of it. Um, abuse, driving, hitting potholes. Don't hit those potholes. God, I hate potholes. Hitting potholes, it just causes so much friction and damage. It's too much weight, the weight of the vehicle. And those bearings, when they were designed, I'm sure we're not designed to take excessive beating from hitting potholes, going over speed bumps too fast. So they give away, they're like, we're done. We're done with our job, you abused us. And they'll start to howl. So every once in a while, even though you like your tunes cranked, you like the music, I love the music, just take five minutes for yourself, drive without music, drive without a phone, and just listen to your car. And you're like, hey, I've never heard that noise before. Do some research. You might actually have howling happening and you're gonna wanna catch it before the wheel starts to wobble, because that could be unsafe. So let me just show you real quick this, the visual, what a wobbly wheel bearing looks like. And as you can see here, that's what a wobbly wheel bearing looks like. <laughs> that is after the fact. They heard howling for a while and they let it go. So that howled and shook because that wheel bearing was wasted. So then we have the opposite with no play in the front. You could even hear it over the music. Of course, if you played it at a normal decibel, but you could hear that howl. And you would actually hear and feel that actually in the floorboard because it's vibrating up through that knuckle and through that subframe. So you're gonna feel that right through the frame of the vehicle on your feet, not so much the seat, because there's no shaking yet. No, it wasn't loose, it was just howling. So let's check the front end out, check the wheel bearing. Now how to diagnose this, you wanna turn the wheel and hold on to a control arm or a strut spring. If you have a truck and you, don't, you only have upper control arm, hold on to that. And you're gonna get an actual vibration right through that knuckle and up the knuckle shaft to the ball joint to the control arm. If you don't have an upper control arm, it's gonna go right up through the strut. And what happens is if you need help, you can get someone to turn it for you. I can hear it but you can also feel it. It's growling right into my hand. So I know this wheel bearing's done, it's toast. We need to do it. What is a wheel bearing? A hub style? I'm gonna show you right now, real quick. So here's an old hub wheel bearing style. This is the bearing and it's pressed onto what they call the hub. That has your lug nuts. This has an ABS sensor in it. There's the actual harness, which goes in, picks up, this little thing right here. Let me see if I can get you a better view of it. So this is with the hub missing. So the lug nut part is called the hub. That piece is missing. These are the sealed bearings in front, inside the seal. And this is the ABS ring right in there. See all those little teeth? Each one of those notches sends a magnetic pulse to this magnet, which has wires in it. 
goes to a plug, sends back an open, close, open, close, open, close pulse to the PCM. This mounts right here. Sometimes you'll get an ABS code, right? And someone says to you, ah, oh, we have to replace your wheel bearing. Because some of these only come with a wheel bearing. <laughs> this one is bolted on, but you might not be able to get this at all, even from the manufacturer. That's because they want that to come with the wheel bearing. If that's gone bad and it's not an obvious broken wire, if that magnet's broken, more than likely inside this actuator ring, it's probably got a crack in it. And it probably came up and cracked the magnet. So it's best to do them as a pair. Found a hub because I wanted to really show you guys what a hub looks like without the bearing pressed on it. And here we are. So there's the splines in there, and that's usually for a CV axle. That goes in, and the CV axle nut goes on that. The clean surface of a hub where that gets pressed into this bearing. Now, this is an old bearing, but I wanted you to see what it looks like when it's inside the knuckle. So these are hub bearings that are bolted on, and these are hub bearings that are pressed on. So Another race, this is, a ha this is called a race, and that sits right in here in those bearings, and then that seal holds it in there. But when you press out an actual hub, this race that you see on this side actually gets stuck on this hub. So when you press it out, use a press machine, you press it out, now your hub has this race stuck on it. And you've got a brand new bearing, and you're like, oh, I gotta put the hub back on there so I can drive down the road. Now you have to take that race off which if you have torches or you have access to a good vise, you can heat it up without trying not to do any damage and it will enlarge from the heat, get soft, and you can pop it off. Sometimes it just hammers right off. But if you cause a mark at all on this hub, when it goes back in there, you will be doing damage to this bearing. It will have play, it could spin in place. For the price of buying the hub separate and a Preston bearing separate, Together, we offer the kits at the 1A Auto site. That is why we offer the kits, because it's not worth your time. Your time is valuable, don't forget that. Brand new, brand new, <whistles> and no waste of time. Press it together, put it on your vehicle, and down the road you go. This is exactly what it looks like all together. That's the back side. Your CV shaft goes right in there, and this is the bearing part that spins. So another thing I really gotta talk to you about, because in this industry, I've been doing this for 36 years, and I have seen qualified mechanics and techs just ignore this and it's not helping you out so I want you to understand when you do this you want to do it the correct way and that is this axle nut how it goes through that hub I showed you what a hub looks like this piece is pressed on to this piece that has that steel shank right in there in the center of that bearing what's holding these two together other than being pressed in but they need to be bolted in so when that axle goes through that spline and comes out the other side, it looks just like that. You're gonna put that axle nut on and you are not gonna reef on it. When I mean that, that's a mechanic term for taking your socket and you don't do that. Mm -mm. Because now you're taking that bearing and you're pressing it too tight. What happens? You'll end up with a howl. These bearings get friction and they get overheated because now they need a certain amount of play to do their job, and if you over tighten it in this position, tighter is not better, okay? You have to do it by a proper spec, and our hubs all come with the manufacturer's spec. This one happens to be 184 foot-pounds, so I strongly recommend you can either purchase a torque wrench, or borrow a torque wrench, and they even rent them. Over-torquing or under-torquing will damage your wheel bearing, so make sure you do it properly. When they become bad, these right in here will get, sometimes they get play, and sometimes there is no play. And to check it for play, you simply grab your tire, I say noon and six o'clock, and you're gonna go back and forth. Oh, there's play there, Sue. Yeah, but I know that doesn't feel like a wheel bearing, so that's why I'm gonna check the whole front end out. So by doing this, look at this upper ball joint. This is why you have to do a whole front end check and don't just replace one part because you're kind of chasing your tail, right? Look at that. Now, will that contribute to other things? Yeah. This needs to be tight and doing its job, absorbing the shock from the road so that this bearing doesn't have any more stress on it than it already has. So we want to do an upper control arm or just a ball joint. If this ball joint comes out separate, 
than do just the ball joint, which it does. This thing is old and rusted, but this is a bolt right through here, and that ball joint goes up into the control arm. I personally like shiny new things, so <laughs> I would do the whole thing only because it makes me happy. But you don't have to. Now you're going to go side to side this way, and you're going to check tie rod ends. This has a power steering rack, so it has inner, rack, inner tie rod ends and outer tie rod ends. Uh, that feels fine. All right, so now that we see this wheel, see how the whole wheel moves like this? You can see that, right? And you're like, wow, that whole wheel's moving. That is really what it looks like when the hub is no good if it's loosened up internally. But we know it's the ball joint, right? So let me show you what the wheel would look like without any moving suspension parts. So now on this side, I've already checked it out. So I know I have no ball joint, tie rod end, or wheel bearing play, and I have no howl from this side. So this is what it's going to look like if it's in good shape and you have no problems. I'm going to grab this. And I can't move that wheel at all. That is not moving. That's a solid hub, solid ball joint, upper and lower. The lower one you should check with a jack, but I'm pretty sure it's fine. No, I'm just <laughs> I checked it with a jack, it's fine. So this is a solid front end of tightness is the way it would want to be on both sides. So it doesn't cause tire wear, shaking, vibration going down the road. So I hope you enjoyed this video about wheel bearing and hubs. I know I enjoyed making it for you. The sounds, everything, it's quite a uh, fascinating little thing about wheel bearings, isn't it? But if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe and don't forget to ring that bell, turns on all your notifications. And don't forget 1AAuto.com for all your automotive needs.